The world's in turmoil and people don't see what's getting ready to happen. I know what's getting ready to happen. He's getting ready to come. I pay attention. I was reading this morning right off the coast of Daytona Beach, Florida. There was a rare earthquake underneath there. They said it's very rare. Well, there's another sign. Jesus said there'd be earthquakes in diverse places, didn't he? I'm telling you, get ready. He's getting ready to come. If you have your Bibles this morning, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, beginning in verse 15. 2 Chronicles chapter 20, beginning in verse 15. Anybody ready to have church this morning? Anybody ready to get into the presence of the Lord? I believe we've already had church, and I believe we're going to have some more church. I may just keep you all afternoon. <laughs> Amen. Second Chronicles chapter 20, beginning in verse 15. Very familiar story right here. Probably one of my favorites in the Bible. I've preached this many times, but every time I preach it a totally different way. There's something right there. Many people try to fight their own battles. Amen. When you try to step in the way of fighting your own battles, there's one thing that's totally going to happen, total defeat. But if you allow God to fight the battle, you'll be victorious. Anybody know what I'm talking about? That's what the, battle, the battle's not yours, what I'm going to speak on this morning. This battle's God's this morning. And the, he said, unto, said, Hearken all Judah and all you inhabitants of Jerusalem, thy king Jehoshaphat, Thus said the Lord unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed by the reason of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours but God's. Amen right there. Tomorrow go you down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz, and you shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeroel. And you shall not need to fight in this battle. Set your steps. Stand ye still. And see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. How many know I like that? This battle's not yours. And I like what he says right here. Stand ye still and see the salvation of the Lord. I want to speak to you this morning on this battle's not yours. This battle's not yours, but God's. Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord, this morning, and we ask for your anointing, dear God, Lord. And we ask you, God, to touch, dear Lord, and give me the words you would have me to speak, dear Lord. And we pray, Lord, for your anointing and your spirit to flow in here today, Father God. We exalt you, dear God, and we lift you up, dear God, Lord. Lord, and we pray, Lord, for you to just touch, dear God, and move in a mighty way, dear Father God. Lord, have your way, dear Father Father God, in this sanctuary, in Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. I imagine there's all been times where we seem like we've been overwhelmed, uh, when it seems like there, we're surrounded by the enemy. It seems like there's an enemy on one side and there's an enemy on the other side. Anybody know what I'm talking about? It seems each way you turn, it seems like there's a multitude, a multitude that's coming against you. It seems like when it rains, it don't rain. It just pours. I, you know, it's like Job said in Job 14 and one man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of troubles. So I'm telling you, there's times you'll find yourself when you're surrounded by enemies that are far bigger than you, far outnumber you, got more, you know, weaponry than you, got a greater, you know, they're bigger, taller, whatever you want to see. And it seems like in the natural it would be an impossible circumstance. Uh, and it, in the natural it would seem a total defeat uh, and it's just like Jehoshaphat right here if you were to look at this in the natural realm you would think that Judah and them wouldn't have a chance in the world uh, with all these people coming up against this little place uh, but I want you to know we don't look at things in the natural uh, I'm telling you this morning we don't look at the seen things uh, what do we look at uh, we look at the unseen thing uh, we look at the unseen one uh, you see this morning I want you to know uh, yes there was a great multitude that was 
that's coming against Jehoshaphat. There was a great multitude against Judah and Jerusalem. But I want you to know they had a help far greater than any multitude could ever have. They had a far help, help greater than anything the world had ever known of. You know who was fighting this battle for them? It was the hand of God this morning. I don't know about you, but I can't think of nobody else better to fight the battle for me than the hand of Jehovah God. Because if I got the hand of God by my side, I'm telling you this morning, I know everything's going to be all right. If I got God fighting for me, I'm walking out of this thing victorious. If I got God fighting for me this morning, there's a giant that's going to be slayed. If I got God fighting for me this morning, I don't care how many is around me. I can tell you that he'll send one angel that will slew 185,000 men in one night. How many know this morning when God fights the battles, everything's going to be all right. Oh, people don't want God to fight the battles. Oh, I'm telling you, the odds say we're against them. The odds makers would have said, eh, it's to be over in a matter of moments. You know, there'd be a devil there <laughs> saying, won't you give in? Won't you give in? Oh, you're defeated. How many have ever heard the devil tell you, you might as well give it in? I'm telling you, don't give it in. I'm telling you to hang on because God's got this thing this morning. Did you hear what I'm saying? I told you God's got this battle this morning. This battle's not yours. This battle is God's this morning. I'm telling you, I begin to read this book story again. And I begin to see things that Jehoshaphat knew that this battle belonged to God. He knew where he had to turn. He knew he needed the Lord to fight this battle. He knew without the Lord fighting this battle, it would be total defeat. His enemies would come in and take control of the land right then and there. Anybody know what I'm talking about? How many know this morning you don't need the arm of flesh, but you need the hand of God this morning? How many know you don't need the latest fad, the latest psychology trend, the latest book, but you need the hand of God this morning? I'm I'm telling you what I need in this nation today. I, I'll tell you what's needed in this nation. The pulpits need to quit preaching. A feel good, kiss me, have me, lay me down to sleep message. They need to quit preaching. A psychological message. A fad message. And it needs to get back to preaching. The good old gospel ship. Some old fashioned preaching. Hell, fire and brimstone. Once again, I'm telling you what the problem is this country is. We've got away from the gospel and we've tried to put our hand in everything else but the word of God this morning. I don't need the latest psychology trend. You got these preachers that preach that. I don't need a trend that tells me everything's just going to be hunky-dooey. Because if you're on your way to hell and under the judgment of God, everything ain't hunky doing. I don't need that. What this country needs, and if any time a nation needs it, it is right now. It needs Jesus Christ. It needs the help of the gospel. And it must start behind these pulpits. And it must go into the world. But people don't want to tell you they need the help of God no more. But Jehoshaphat knew. He said, if I'm going to survive these odds and this onslaught, I need the help of God. How many know sometimes the enemy comes in like a flood, don't it? But I'm telling you, the Spirit of God is there to lift up the standard. Oh, he knew. He acknowledged he needed the help of God. That's where it starts at. Here's how you get God to fight. First thing you do with getting God to fight your battles. You acknowledge you need the help of God. Some people say, I don't need the help of anybody. Baloney. Let me tell you, if I didn't have the help of God, I wouldn't be standing up here this morning. If it wasn't for God, you wouldn't be in here this morning. I'll even go this far. If it wasn't for God, they wouldn't be one. If they're breathing, they've got the help of God this morning. 
I'm telling you, you got to have, acknowledge the help of God. I believe this country, if the leaders of this land would say, Lord, we need your help fighting ISIS, ISIS wouldn't be a problem. Amen. If our government would say we need the help of God, if the churches would say we need the help of God, I'm telling you, we'd be mighty this morning. You wouldn't see the things you're seeing right now, I believe. But people don't want the help of God. How about individuals that want the help of God? Don't want the help of God. They want to do it any old way but the way of God. How many know what Zechariah says? In Zechariah 4 and 6, it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord of hosts. I'm telling you this morning, if we're going to be victorious, we've got to have the help of God. How many's in a battle this morning? How many's in a situation this morning? I'm telling you. What you need, you don't you need the world. You need the help of God this morning. I, I'm telling you today, if we're going this battle, you need to get out of the way and say, God, I need you to fight this battle. I can't do it, but I surely know that you can this morning. I, I'm telling you, I don't have the ability, but I know one is far greater than a great multitude. I, I know one far bigger than any giant. I, I know one is far bigger than the things of this world. I, it's time we acknowledge uh, that we need the help of God. People are too prideful to acknowledge they need the help of God. Amen. People's got it into their own mindset. You hear this. They got it in their own mind self. How many ever heard of self-reliance? I'm getting ready to debunk out out the window. What are you talking about, self-reliance? Self-reliance says I depend on everything, for myself for everything. Well, that's good. But I'm going to tell you, I ain't self-reliant. I'm God-reliant. If you're self-reliant, you're missing the mark. You're saying, God, I don't need you. You're saying, God, I do this on my own. Let me tell you, there'll come a time where everybody will need the help of God. I've heard some of the biggest people that says they ain't need God. They get on their deathbed, the first person they call out to is, oh, God, help me, ain't it? I've had people mock Pentecost. But boy, as soon as they get the bad news, who's the first one they call? They call those old tongue-talking, holy, roly filled saints of God, don't they? Because they know them people know how to get a prayer through to heaven. Oh, you're looking at people saying, well, you don't need God. I'll tell you this. You tell them you don't need God. You let the doctor tell you you ate up with cancer. And I'll tell you the first person you'll call out to is God. People say they don't need God. Then one, the first person, they get, when they, something goes wrong, they say Pray. How many can go back to September the 11th? Anybody remember that? Year 2001, I believe. Let me tell you, you didn't see no ACLU out there trying to ban prayer, did you? You didn't see no liberal out there saying we shouldn't pray. But I'm telling you right there, that very moment after that, they gathered on the gates in Washington, D.C. and said, let us pray. I'm telling you today, there'll come a time when you're going to need God. There'll come a time where you're going to need the help of God. I don't know about you, but I need him every day. I need him every moment. I need him every second. I'm telling you, we're in a battle in this day. And I come by to tell you, this battle not yours but this battle is God and I'm telling you he's going to lead the charge in this fight this morning yeah. oh just show him out people don't want him no more let me tell you what begins to happen people don't ask the help of God anymore can I tell you why some Christians are totally defeated uh-oh. They will find their self in a uh, position because they refuse to invite God in in the circumstance. What are you saying, preacher? How many remember the story of Joshua? What is that AI situation? There was a time where this mighty man of God 
just assumed the victory would be his and didn't he? He refused. He did not do something one day. He did not pray and ask for the help of God. And the whole time about this, what was going on in the camp was Achan was stealing from God. And sin 